What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? Boogie 2988 coming to show off again to the power of the internet. And you guys went nuts the last time I went to a couple of local gaming places in town. So today I'll take you to one of my favorite places, the Game Exchange. Now, I don't know if you have these in your area, but we've got them all over the South. And I have some stories about some game exchanges that I'll tell you as I give you a tour of the place. So let's get in here and check out some games. I'm sure it's not because of Magic the Gathering, but a lot of these stores are starting to get into trading card games. And I see Magic, but also Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh and that kind of thing. And they never have anything like crazy special but it is nice to see them when I come to these stores because there's a chance I'll see something cool. And this place, just like every other place you go to these days, has plenty of pop vinyls to go around. I mean, other toys as well. And I actually really like the way this place has their pop vinyls displayed, you know, so you can see the side label. If I did anything with the pop vinyls I have out in the garage, this is how I would display them. I feel like it's way better to just see the labels so you know what you've got than to see the actual box. Another thing I'm always amazed by is how much anime has blown up. I mean, all of these other collectibles and figures and stuff, kind of great. Do you guys remember muscles from the 80s and the 90s? I loved them. And I've never seen Street Fighter muscles. I really wanted those, but eh, four bucks, kind of a waste for three tiny pieces of plastic. And when it comes to the Pokemon collectible stuff, it'll always be popular. Seeing these was surprising to me, though. I remember when these were in both Target and Walmart not too long ago. Same with these Super Mario Brothers ones. And I guess these are kind of like cute little gift bundles. I don't know. The mystery box aspect is silly. I think mystery boxes have finally completely blown over. But as a cute little gift bundle for somebody you don't know what to get them, I think they're a nice choice. I'm always surprised to see how many DVDs and Blu-rays and VHS tapes these people have. I don't know if they ever sell them. I don't know anybody that collects old movies and media, but someone out there has to be. I mean, some people love their physical video games, so it makes sense that they would love their physical movies and stuff as well but game exchange has always been kind of great and used to is almost exclusively video games these days it feels like a flea market it feels like a gaming convention and they have a ridiculous amount of collectibles and i don't really like the prices because most of the time you get the stuff cheaper elsewhere but as far as impulse buys go it's kind of great look at that anime section though anime is so huge Back in the day, when I was uh, between homes, I, this is the easiest way to put it, uh, Game Exchange allowed me to sell off some of the gaming collectibles I had. And I'll be honest with you, we might have come across some ill-guarded games back in the day at your local Kmart. And uh, Game Exchange allowed me to get rid of those to pay for my first and last month's rent when I needed to start saving up for an apartment. So they even actually told us which games they would pay the most for, especially if they were new in box. I, uh, it was one particular game exchange manager. I don't think it has anything to reflect on the chain, but he was actually really nice to us and knew our situation and didn't mind uh, looking the other way. So to this day, I still go into game exchange and try to throw them a couple of bucks just because I remember they did that for us. Everywhere you look in the store, whether it's in the DVD section or the video game section, doesn't matter. There's some cool collectibles. I mean, we've got obviously tons of anime and DVDs and games and stuff, but I love all of these plush collectibles. I don't know how many of them they sell. I wanted all of them. I, the, the Link pillow looks great. The Animal Crossing ones, I even have some of these. For example, I got the, uh, the, the, the Bachomp, the big block guy from Mario. I have that on my couch that's sitting next to me right now. 
the video game section is still so much smaller, but still really great to see this stuff here. I didn't want to film the people working up front, so I try to avoid that to the best of my degree. Wait till they turn their backs and stuff. And, but look at this new Matter of the Gathering stock. The latest sets even have some singles and stuff that you can peruse and look through. And the new Lord of the Rings set is there. Latest Pokemon set. All of that stuff is here. And I do love it. Yeah, plenty of video game stuff is always going to be important in stores like this. But I know that as more and more people are getting their stuff digitally, it's good to branch out. So that's the game exchange. Very different from what I remember. A lot more collectibles. Really cool to see some of those collectibles in there. Honestly, there's some stuff I wanted. But I just... I'm getting too old to waste money on a chocolate wand, let's be honest. But let's go check out vintage stock as well while we're in town. Here we have another vintage stock. Several in the area. Each one's different. Each stock, each is different vintage stock. Does that make sense? Each has different stock in it. So let's go see what this vintage stock has that the game exchange and the other stores and the other vintage stock doesn't have. Now, this vintage stock is pretty different from the other ones, but I mean, they're all different. This one is up in Benville though, so near Walmart home office. And I feel like because of that, they're gonna have slightly more ritzy collectibles. And this place is also just kind of all over the place. You got toys in the DVD section, video game stuff there as well. Oh, those are those cyberpunk figures. I saw those at Game Exchange as well. Kind of like muscles, I don't know. I would love to get back into the original muscle collection. I know they did a reprint not too long ago, and I know they're not too expensive, but the Street Fighter ones were cool. More video game stuff, and some of the stuff is extremely expensive. Those GameCube games are pricey. More pop vinyls all over, everywhere. But it makes sense. There's some pop vinyls for everyone. I know not every pop vinyl is for everyone, uh, but there's probably one that speaks to you, and if you ever see it in one of these videos, let me know. I still have a collection I just don't do anything with. The anime stuff is cool here. I really like seeing a Domican in, out in the wild. But the Dukes of Hazard stuff, who had that? Who sold that to them? Why is that here? What a weird, older collectible. Vintage stock still, of course, not just the movies and music and everything else, but the old school comic books as well. And it's one of the very few places in town to be able to get your hands on a comic book. So if you're looking to collect them or pick them up or, God forbid, actually read them non-digitally, it's one of the last places to get it. And I always like to look at the toy section. I bought a lot of toys from this particular vintage stock. Uh, my Link Sword and Shield came from here. It was a birthday gift back in the day. I love Garbage Pail Kid stuff, and as soon as I saw this, I'm like, I'm probably going to end up picking this up. This was an advent calendar from back in 2020 that I saw at Walmart, but I felt like it was overpriced at Walmart. I didn't want to pay all that money for it, but here, 20 bucks seems right. So many toys, and still mint in box, some brand new, some used, some probably picked up on clearance. Even magic stuff here on the shelf as well. I love that Power Girl and that Sinestro figure. I like those high detailed, larger pieces. Absolutely what I like to collect. I have a few around my home as well, like a Deadpool that came in a loot crate as well as Hulk from Ragnarok. And those would just look great next to it. They do have a Magic the Gathering section here with some, you know, modern sealed product, older sealed product. Also crazy to see these little mini packs, these repacks. $5.99 is what they charge for them. And sometimes you get lucky and there'll be a valuable common or uncommon on the front. Sometimes even a rare. Most of the time these are junk. If you wanted to get together and do a sealed deck, you could, but I ended up picking one of those up. Stick around to the end of the video if you want to see what I got. More of these anime figurines, and I know they're so popular. If you collect them out there, no judgment. Just not for me. Not my kind of thing, but... 
the anime section here is so big. All of these stores have so much anime stuff, which is surprising to me. I remember, oh, and look, the Princess Bride Fezzik figure. I just was blown away by that. I can't believe that exists. I would love to have that signed by Andre. Could you imagine? Price on it though, crazy. More garbage pill kit stuff, and this is always my jam. Look at those little figures. I didn't never see this line before. I had no clue that it existed, and I kind of wanted to get them. But all of this stuff is really great. I just, that old Matter of the Gathering series, I have that somewhere in a closet. If I haven't given it away or sent it to Goodwill, just not, nobody really wanted them. Magic players want cards. They don't want plastic figures. Finally getting into the video game section here, but it's actually really small as well. Figures, controllers, the cords and things that you need, but in between that section is still plenty of collectibles and toys. Not a ton of games, not a ton of controllers. I'd say less than a third of the store is video game related. Look at this, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands just came out last year and this is a figure from that. Why is that $100? I didn't think the game is that popular. Really surprised at this Dungeons and Dragons section coming up. There's just so much here. I do collect the indie minis. I've got a huge collection. Got to figure out what to do with them one day, other than play D and D with them. This is what they're used for. But uh, this is a larger D and D section than most game stores have. Including like these Spelljammers series, I didn't even know this existed. And I do love the store, even if it does have Among Us stuff. Whenever I see stuff like that, it's a little bit cringy, especially since it's been a few years since that was popular, but the kids still like it, right? It's a good thing to have up in the store to make the kids happy and if their parents drag them in, at least they can relate to something. Cause they're probably not gonna relate to these older PlayStation 2 and Wii games as much as I do, or as much as you do, but they are great. The audio section here, also really great. The vinyl records, I couldn't believe in sync. Upcoming here is Dr. Dre, like some of these albums, sure they sound great on a record player, but that art would just look great on the wall. And then they had these loose cartridges. Made me feel like I was at a game convention looking at these loose cartridges. I, I do feel like they had quite the selection. So I normally don't treat myself at these types of stores, but today I decided to. My girlfriend was with me and she wanted one of the Thai beanie bellies. So I thought if she was getting that, maybe I'd go ahead and get myself two things. I got me the Garbage Pro Kids advent calendar, and I will probably keep this until Christmas and open it then. I also wanted to see how big of a ripoff these little blocks of commons and uncommons are. The reason I picked this one though is because it's got an Ice Age common or uncommon on the front that is pretty rarely ever reprinted. And I thought, well, there might be a Mystic Remora in this. So I guess let's crack it and see if we get lucky. All right, Thermocost, probably worth 10 cents. Uh, yeah, another 10 cent common. Revised uncommon, revised uncommon. Again, these are all penny cards. If I had anything of any relative value that I recognize, I'll tell you. But you know, when it comes to these older cards, sometimes they have their uses. Stone Rain, I mean, somebody could build a land destruction green red deck with what we've pulled so far. More Ice Age commons. Stone Rain, one of the most printed cards in the game, and we got four. Hopefully no more than four. Well, we got five, six stone rains, uh, seven stone rains, jeez. Hey, this guy you could use in your elf deck, three casting cost tasks for two rain. I mean, he's got its uses. Orcs from Fallen Empires, another Fallen Empires. You know it's bad when you're getting Fallen Empires bulk. Um, I, I, they don't do a great job of making these repacks worth it. So I never, never buy them, but sometimes it is just cool for the nostalgia, right? Oh, an Ice Age Island. These retro islands, 
and retro lands are sometimes nice to collect. I mean, they have full art ones and stuff, right? But sometimes when you get stuff like this, this is uh, the nostalgia of just this particular island is really nice to me. So, Repulse, that's Seas Play in some decks. Phantom Monster, Prodigal Sorcerer, as we called him back in the day. Tim, some called me Tim. Oh, I, I got excited when I saw the Innervate. Uh, as Zephyr Falcon, Prodigal Sorcerer, Pearl Merfolk. Oh, Dark Common, Ghost Ship, Psychic Venom. We're in the blue cards. That's where it would be if we needed it. Boomerang. Again, if you're going to play a land destruction deck, you can do three colors uh, and add Boomerang to it. Ristic Deluge. I'd rather have a Ristic Study. That's one of the cards that we would go nuts for. But Grizzly, Wolverines, 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 Wolverines. Are we getting six Wolverines? Seven Wolverines, eight Wolverines, two play sets of Wolverines. My gosh, yeah. Nothing. Ooh, all right. Well, Pyroblast, that always maintains a couple of that, a couple of dollars and at least a couple of cents, if I'm not mistaken. And several Pyroblasts. That might have been worth it right there. Mountain Goats, that is Pyroblast? Yeah, Pyroblast gets played for sure. That might be worth it. Blade Root, oh, there's a Nature's Lore, two Nature's Lore, three Nature's Lore. That card still gets played to this day and is worth a couple of pennies because of it. Well, did not get the specific common and uncommon value that I was hoping for, but definitely got some decent playables for sure. What's funny is I have so many of these cards out and about in the garage that I've never really gone through. I might have some of this uh, nature's lore and cards along that lines, but did I get my $6 back? Probably not, but did I have fun doing it? Yeah. And nostalgia is always priceless. So, as always, guys, thanks for watching. I love you very much. And I will speak with you again soon. If you enjoy these junking, thrifting videos, let me know. We'll do more of it.